Online communities are groups of people who come together for a specific purpose that are guided by community policies, that is rules that have to be respected and which are supported online by virtual communication. The examples we have seen, Google+, WhatsApp, YouTube, and so on. Social networks are a set of social relevant nodes connected by one or more relations. Here you can see one. So you see a lot of nodes and a lot of relations. For example, so here is a social network. You can see here, first of all, the social graph. So the overall picture of nodes, of relationships in an online social network. And it depicts the relations with the users. For example, you can see here this person, also called a node. A node is an individual actor, a user. It can be also brands, it can be things, but here in this case, it's a user. It's a social graph depicts the relations with the users, how he has relationships with us. So he is in the center and he's related directly here with these guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, the person directly related, but via this guy, he might be related to this person and to this person. And so we have direct links and we have indirect links. And these individual actors or brands are called nodes. The social graph is the overall representation of social relationships. And we have also node-to-node -node relationships, also called edges, uh, which are the relationships, interactions between the nodes. Here, for example, we have a direct node-to-node -node relationship. With this person, we have an indirect node-to-node -node relationship. This is important to understand because arms and brands know the direct relationships or have direct relationships in order to acquire new customers. It is important that our direct nodes or the individual actors connect us with the indirect nodes. That is that through this guy, we might recruit this guy and this guy. And through this guy, we might recruit this guy and this guy. And through this guy, there might be another node here, which we might recruit. And this is done by social share. If we send for example, an, an interesting offer with a discount to this guy. He might share that on his Facebook page to indirect relationships who might come directly to us in order to purchase. And they, on the other side, connect with other indirect or direct nodes. This is also called viral marketing because uh, the more we share information or social commerce information or uh, social discounts, uh, the more it spreads like a virus exponentially and this increases then the impact of social media campaigns. We have seen for in the former chapter that there are some network actors which are more interesting than others, uh, nat naturally the creators. And this is also what we can see. It's important to identify influencers in order to increase the impact of a social media campaign. So influencers are those who have a more proportional impact on others and help to spread information. And yeah, the most important ones are the opinion leads. Now, these are, uh, they are also called lead users or mavens. And these opinion leaders are experts. They are trusted in the community. And they're experts in the field and not necessarily in all fields. For example, if you're an expert in informatics, you're not necessarily an, an expert in fashion. Opinion leaders are, have a very restricted expertise in a field. It's a person who is frequently able to influence others' attitudes or behaviors. In other words, these opinion leaders, as they're experts, they're often consulted by others, and this enables people to, to learn more about a brand. And that's why important for a brand to identify that, right? because if you have a strong relationship with an opinion leader who is communicating a lot, who has a high degree of network links and notes, then you can very quickly spread information, advertisements for your brand. And above all, as they are trusted experts, people trust them more than the brand. And if you look at Amazon or TripAdvisor, you have experts who know very well about traveling or very well about products. And actually customers are looking more at these opinion leaders and what they publish 
than what the brand is publishing itself. Because people believe that these experts are trustees and that they can trust in them more than in the brand. Today, 80% of customers look at online reviews of opinion leaders before buying, rather more than those who look at the advertisement of a brand. In other words, it's very important to connect to these opinion leaders. You have connectors, which are also important target groups. It's an elite group of people who practice the art of cultivating long-term relationships. They think about and use of social media and technology differently, far more effectively than the average customer. It's not like an opinion leader. It's not an expert. But the connectors have a large number of relationships, and they can spread very easily the information. So I come back to my, my example of my network. Here in the center, this is a connector. It's not necessarily an expert. There's a lot of relationships and a lot of connections. And if you spread information to this connector, he or she will spread this information to a large number of people around him, direct nodes. He has a large number of node-to-node -node relationships or edges. But these edges, again, have a lot of relationships. So you can increase the impact of your social media campaign. That is why it's important to focus also on these connectors. And it is important to focus on these opinion leaders because yeah, they are perceived as more credible, believable than the normal customer or the normal user on social media. So these are the main targets you should aim at when doing social media campaigns. Now you probably ask how, how you can identify. That's a good question. One way to identify opinion leaders is to do an observation of online community. If you interact with online communities, you will see that some people interact more than others. Some are only observers. Others will post. Right? So if you see, if you have somebody on your Instagram group or in a Facebook group, yeah, those people who will publish a lot yeah, will be either connectors right? because they interact a lot, right? they, they participate a lot, or they're even mavens or opinion leaders. If you can see that... They have a high degree of expertise. You see that the person is posting very intelligent things, questions, points. Then he's probably an opinion. So one way to, to identify influencers is to look in your media and to look at what they publish, the content. Another mean is to look at the cloud score. The cloud score is actually a value between 1 and 100. It's an influencer store which can be measured on Twitter. The higher it is, it goes to 100, the more the person or the, the node or the connection is an influencer. One is a low score, 100 is the highest and the best. score, And it takes into account the number of followers you have, the number of retweets you're doing. And for example, if you look here, the cloud score is based on how many relationships you have. So how many connections do you follow, for example, on Twitter or on Instagram? And how many people do you follow? The higher both are, the higher will be also the, your cloud score. And the more you post, the more you ask questions, the more you will increase also your cloud score. And you can see 63 is a high cloud score. It's only around 5% in a group that has this high score. But in again, if we come to the idea, who are these opinion leaders and connectors they are software tools that are helping you to identify and to calculate the cloud score. With Instagram, you have to find people with, with a Twitter account because everybody who has Twitter has automatically a cloud score. And then you have Twitter analytics, which enables you to calculate the score. Again, those who have scores between 50 and 70 are worth con of consideration. Right? Because 70s are the top influencers, the 63 are very good influencers, and 51 are average, which are not too bad. All those below, right? for example, those are not worthwhile to connect. This enables you also to identify your influencers. How can you increase this cloud score as a user? Again, right? by increasing the number of followers, the number of uh, people you follow, you can also identify them by asking questions, right? asking about the knowledge, uh, by identifying with software tools your audience in order to know them better, and uh, by making content easy to share. Right? So the more you give possibilities, for example, on Instagram to share information, uh, the more people will participate and the more they become influenced. Right? The more they have connections and the more you will improve your viral marketing campaign.
Also, the cloud score influences by multi social media presence uh, because actually people who are on Twitter, the more they are on Facebook, Google Plus, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Wikipedia, uh, and all these different media, the higher will become also the cloud. Uh, that's why it's also important for a brand to be present not only on Instagram or not only on Facebook, but on all of them, even Google Plus, because, because Google Plus is come from Google. And you know, the algorithm to be ranked in the search engine is highly influenced by the presence of Google Plus. That is why most brands are today in Google Plus, not because the network is interesting, but uh, because Google integrates the fact that uh, people have an account on, on Google Plus, and this increases also the social presence. So this is another meme to identify influencers by using the cloud score. So first, as I said, by looking at what they post. Second, at looking at uh, the cloud score. And as I said, it should be between minimum 50 uh, and uh, Italy around 70, 80. The higher this cloud score, the higher will be the influence. Thank you.